Hello and welcome to our overview video on how to configure self-service. Self-service is the end user portal that allows your end users on your network to create their own tickets and check the status of their tickets. They can also search the solutions database to look for solutions to common issues that might occur on your network. By giving them some self-service capability, you're saving your help desk technicians some time and effort because they don't have to field all those calls. Self-service is installed by default with the TrackIt application. The URL to get to the self-service site is your TrackIt server slash TrackIt slash self-service. The rest of this will autofill once you connect to the page. You will notice during the installation, two icons are created for self-service. One that is the URL we just talked about, which has the slash TrackIt slash self-service address. And the other one is a slash TrackIt slash self-service slash login address. That one is used for AD authentication if you want to allow your end user requesters to connect into self-service using their AD credentials and not use a track it login ID and password. For the purposes of this demo today, we're going to go ahead and use a track it login ID and password, and I'm going to show you how to create that and set that up as well. One additional thing to note about the URL is that this slash track it slash self-service could be different in your environment. It really just depends on your setup by your administrator. What you are looking at right now is the login screen for self-service. For just one moment, we're going to switch over to the main TrackIt application and log in there so that we can go through how to create a end user account. So inside the main TrackIt application, you want to click on the menu and then select configuration. Under configuration, you should see a requesters button. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Today, we're going to be using reader requester as our example account. You notice the last name, first name, this login ID right here is for self-service. But the key part to give Rita access to self-service is to check this box over here, allow access to self-service. Then there are a few access levels you can grant to the requester. Requester access allows them to see only their own tickets. Department allows them to see their own plus anything created by anyone in their department. Location allows them to see anything created by themselves and anything created by anyone in their location. And of course, department and location let you see all of that. So anything created by themselves and anyone in their department or location. And here you can check use Windows authentication and put in a domain slash user ID here. And that would allow them to use AD authentication to connect instead of logging in with the normal self-service user ID. So I'm going to cancel out of here for a moment. Go back to my main configuration and just show you real quickly. Directory importer right here is a much faster way to get all your users in your system. If you only have a handful of users, you can go ahead and manually enter them. But Directory Importer really helps out if you have a couple hundred users or more and you want to get all of them into your system, especially if you want to set them all up with AD authentication. We have another video on this that I highly recommend if you want to use Directory Importer. So before we actually do any customization, I'm going to log into the default self-service portal so you can see what that looks like, and then we'll do the customizations. So to start out, there's a Trackit logo above the login ID here. This logo can be customized, and I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and click Login. This is the main self-service portal. In the upper left-hand corner, there is a Track It Self-Service logo. This logo can be customized, as well as the URL that is behind that. Here on the left-hand side of self-service, you'll see several buttons. The Home button would take you back to the screen you're on right now. Create New Ticket creates a new ticket for the end user. Solutions would allow the user to search the Solutions database. My tickets takes me to all the tickets I've logged before. Here are the custom links down here on the left-hand side. And then underneath the drop-down arrow here, you can see there is a profile settings button. The profile settings allows you to go in and see the information about your self-service account. There's also a welcome message at the top that says, welcome to Trackit self-service. This part that says Trackit can be customized as well. I'm going to go ahead and click on create new ticket here. So you can see the fields that are available inside the default ticket form. Notice this is an abbreviated look at a help desk ticket. It's meant to just be the minimum things you need from an end user to record their issue and get it categorized. Here in just a moment, we'll look at how to customize which of these fields show up on the form. Now I'm going to go back to the home screen and click on View My Tickets because viewing a ticket is different than creating a new ticket. I'm going to go ahead and select one. Here are the default fields that are shown on every ticket form for the user. And under More Details, you can add or remove other fields according to your preference. Now that I've shown you how everything looks in the default view, we're going to go ahead and log out. 
and go back to our main Tracket application. Go under self-service configuration. You will notice under self-service configuration, self-service languages. This is available for people who want to customize the languages, but it's very rarely used. So we're not going to focus on that today. We're going to focus on these settings here. Under self-service settings, you'll see default settings and appearance settings. Under default settings, you will notice there are ticket defaults, security settings, and display settings. Under ticket defaults, this allows me to set up a default group and a default technician for every ticket that's created within self-service. There's also an option to require end users to enter a resolution if they cancel a ticket. For security, you can apply strong password policy to your self-service accounts. So that would use the same strong password policy that's used for technicians for self-service passwords. There's also the option to change the company URL. This is the URL behind that main logo in the self-service module. So for now, I'm going to change this to bmc.com. Then here, you can change this name, which also appears at the top of self-service. I'm going to change this to BMC Software. I'm going to save these settings. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to click on self-service settings again. And I'm going to select appearance settings. Here is where we change which modules appear within self-service, where we select which fields appear on the forms, and where we define custom links. So just for the purposes of this example, I'm going to go ahead and hide the solutions module. I'm going to save that. I'm going to click on fields, and notice there is a create ticket and a view ticket option. For create ticket, I am going to remove priority and category and attachments and click save. Then I am going to go to view ticket, and I am going to remove the hours, department, location, so that those are no longer shown on the form. I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to go under custom links and I'm going to take this one and change it to be bmc.com instead of tracker.com. Then I'm also going to add another one so you can see that what it looks like to have more than one. Save that. Now I'm going to take a look at the logos for the product. The logos are something you have to customize outside of the Tracket application. So if you go into your Windows Explorer and you navigate down through the file structure on the server where Trackit is installed, you're looking for the BMC Trackit self-service content folder. And under content, there's an images folder. And then under images, you'll see two other folders, common and custom. Under common, if we scroll down near the bottom, you'll see a PNG file called Trackit. This PNG file, is the graphic that is shown on the top of the login screen. If you rename this file and then replace it with another PNG, then the new PNG will be shown on that login dialog. If I go back to my images folder and look under custom, there's another PNG file in here called company logo. The company logo PNG is the one that is shown within the track itself service module in the upper left. So again, you could rename this one and then replace it with another file called companylogo.png, and self-service would use that logo. Some of these changes require the cache to be cleared on the end user's browser. So for some of these logo changes, it's a good idea to change those prior to doing a big rollout. I have gone ahead and modified these logos offline so that I can show you what they look like, and you'll see when we log in again. So now that we've made all our changes, we're gonna go back to self-service, and you're gonna notice my new company logo at the top of the login page. I go ahead and log in. You're going to notice my new company logo at the top left. You're also going to notice that the solutions module is gone because we hid that. You're also going to notice that it says BMC software up here now instead of track it. You'll notice that this URL, if we click on the logo here, now goes to bmc.com instead of trackit.com. You'll notice under custom links here that Google has been added and the track it link has been changed to BMC. Let's go ahead and open up a new ticket here and see what has happened with our form since we hid some fields. You'll notice now that the priority and category and attachments options are gone. So now there's the bare minimum information for the end user to enter. If we go actually look at some tickets here, this ticket now doesn't contain any of the additional information that we had before. It only contains the default information that comes with the product. So now you've seen an overview of the customization options here for self-service. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right-hand corner inside Trackit.
Some other useful resources are the Trackit community, where you can talk with other Trackit users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.